uh, short. Okay, so uh, good evening, everybody. Just for short uh, reminding what uh, we have talked, uh, I think, one month, sorry, maybe one month ago. Uh, we talk about the Ma'apari Nirvana Sutta. This is a long discourse in the Diga Nikaya, long discourse, number 16. This is talking about few months, about one year before Buddha is passing away, all the way, how the Buddha is going. North is starting actually from the um, area of Budgaya, uh, uh, yeah, from uh, yeah, from the place, this is the area where the kingdom of um, the king Bimbisara, okay? So he start from there and then he go north all the way till he come to the city of uh, Kusinara. Yeah. Uh, that time it was not and Bimbisara, Bimbisara, this time uh, kill him at, at Jatesu. So actually he's coming from there all the way to the north. Uh, and then he reached to Kusinaga. Kusinaga is the place where he passing away. And the last event we talk about, it was when the last students of the Buddha, he came and he want to ask the Buddha questions. The Buddha tell them that wherever he will, any religion that it will be there, the Eightfold Path, this is, will be the religion which you can go into Nirvana then. Okay, and then uh, this man, this then he became a monk, the last monk from the Buddha. Later on, he became enlightened. So now we are in the situation that the Buddha is laying down on the right side and the, his head on the like this, called the lion position. And then uh, the head is to the north, and he something like on the way to die. So this is. Like the passing away, the last uh, part, the sixth part of the Sutta, which long discourse, then now we make already two discourses and two times we talk about it. So now, hopefully, or maybe not, we will finish this today, but we shall see. If not, we will continue the final next time. So uh, maybe Maximiliano, you can read, and then I will explain slowly, slowly about it. The Blessed One's Final Exhortation. Now the Blessed One spoke to the Venerable Ananda, saying, it may be, Ananda, that to some among you the thought will come, and it is the word of the Master, we have a Master no longer. But it should not, Ananda, be so considered, for that, which I have proclaimed and made known as the Dhamma and the discipline, that shall be your master when I'm gone. Okay, something like the, Ananda is asking me, want to know who will be the teacher after you? What who, who we should uh, follow after you? So they say, don't worry, you don't need master, you don't need any any uh, other teachers. You follow the Dhamma. It means the meditation, the teaching. And the discipline, it means the Vinaya, the precept. Okay? So the, the Eightfold Path will be your way. Or oh, the Dharma, the teaching of the, or the uh, meditation, and the part of the purification of the Vinaya. They will be your master. It means if you follow these two things, you don't need a teacher. You will be actually, they will guide you. Okay? Please. And Ananda, whereas now the bhikkhus address one another as friend, let it not be so when I'm gone. The senior bhikkhus Ananda may address the junior ones by their name, their family name, or as friend, but the junior bhikkhus should address the senior ones as venerable sir or your reverence. You see, before they, in the time of the Buddha, they have the master. So the master was in the top of everybody. So there, everybody was something, all the students was equal. And then the master was the most important. He was the reverend one. He was the important one. But now when the Buddha passing away, so the Buddha, the, Buddha, the, the let's say the king go away. So how the people, the people, the monks, 
they are talking about uh, Ananda, I explained Ananda how the monk should respect each other. So the, uh, the Buddha said to Ananda, you are as a monk, you respect your elder. So when you talk to your elders, you don't call them by his name. You just, you just call them uh, Bante, okay? Or, and then the, the senior one, the one that is uh, lower, uh, the elder one, he can call him by his name. For example, me and Tuat, when we are meeting, I call him Venable, but he can call me Ophel, okay? Something I respect him, he's higher than me. But he just called me as his brother, like, uh, okay, I, I'm lower than him. So he called me by my name, but I call him Venable. I don't, uh, normally I will not call him too hot, okay? Something like be respecting the elders. So this is what, uh, what the Buddha said to Ananda. Yeah, please. If it is desired, Ananda, the Sangha may, when I'm gone, abolish the lesser and minor rules. This is a very important sentence, what the Buddha said to Ananda here. You see, we have 227 precepts. The precepts they are not equal. You have four precepts they call Parajika. It means the monk have to be swab if they break them. Another 13 precepts, this is the precept that if the monk break them, he need to make like a meeting of the Sangha. He make like he need to do retreat and con confession. And the rest of the precepts. They are the minor precepts. This is the precept that each monk has to convince to each monk, to another, to his friend. And what the Buddha said to Ananda here, that in the time, in the future, some of the precepts, precepts will not be relevant. Something like this, the world will change. So these minor precepts, they are, they maybe you don't need to hold them anymore. That's why sometimes you see monks in different traditions, there's something like breaking prison because it's very challenge how to deal with it, okay? But it's not mean any prison, the monk can do anything. But to say that some of the prison in the future, something like will not be so relevant because the world will change. But the Buddha, he did not, and the Ananda, he didn't ask the Buddha which prison you are talking about, that the monk have to change to, to uh, not to use them. So uh, the Buddha, uh, uh, that time Ananda said, I'm sorry, I didn't ask the Buddha about it. That's why they list all the 227 precepts as uh, one package. But in the time, many things became a little bit, you cannot 100% deal with them. It will not be possible, okay? So that's why the Buddha, the Buddha knew it already. So that's why I say that in the future, the minor precepts, some of them, you will not be, uh, you don't, you can let go, don't use them. Okay, please. Ananda, when I'm gone, let the higher penalty be imposed upon the Bhikkhu Chana. Yeah, you, sorry, Chana, who is this Chana? Chana was the, uh, the horses rider of the Buddha. He was something like he was helping to the Buddha when the Buddha was young, before Buddha left off, he had horse. So Chana, he was the one that he was guiding the horse and taking care of the horse. And he was very, very, because he was very close to the Buddha, he became too much proud. So he something like show off. And what the Buddha said to him that you, you have to teach him by special behave. What is the behave? But what, Lord, is the higher penalty? The bhikkhu Chana Ananda may say what he will, but the bhikkhu should neither converse with him nor exhort him nor admonish him. Something like you have to ignore him. He will be proud, he will show off, but just don't talk with him. Just something like ignore him. So he will learn to be humble by this. Yeah. Then the Blessed One addressed the bhikkhus, saying, It may be, bhikkhus, that one of you is in doubt or perplexity as to the Buddha, the Dhamma, or the Sangha, the path or the practice. Then question, bhikkhus, do not be given to remorse later on with the thought, the Master was with, was with us face to face, yet face to face we failed to ask him. Please continue. But 
But when this was said, the bhikkhus were silent. And yet a second and a third time, the blessed one said to them, it may be because that one of you is in doubt or perplexity as to the Buddha, the Dhamma, or the Sangha, the path or the practice. Then question because. Do not be given to remorse later on with the thought, the master was with us face to face, yet face to face we failed to ask him. And for a second and a third time, the bhikkhus were silent. Then the blessed one said to them, it may be because out of respect for the master that you ask no questions. Then, because let friend communicate it to friend. Yet still the bhikkhus were silent. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I just explained. You see what the Buddha is doing? The Buddha said to the monk, if you have any doubt, please ask me. So the monk keep quiet. So second time, third time, the Buddha say, if you have any question, please go on and ask questions. So the monk keep quiet. Ask, keep quiet. Okay, and then? And the Venerable Ananda spoke to the Blessed One, saying, Marvelous it is, O Lord, most wonderful it is. This faith I have in the community of bhikkhus, that not even one bhikkhu is in doubt or perplexity as to the Buddha, the Dhamma, or the Sangha, the path, or the practice. Out of faith, Anand Ananda, you speak thus. But here, Ananda, the Tathagata knows for certain that among this community of bhikkhus, there is not even one bhikkhu who is in doubt or perplexity as to the Buddha, the Dhamma, or the Sangha, the path, or the practice. For, Ananda, among these 500 bhikkhus, even the lowest is a stream enterer, secure from downfall, assured and bound for enlightenment. Okay, so what actually the Buddha said, Ananda was very happy about the situation. Oh, how come all the monks, they don't have any doubt, they didn't they all, nothing for them to ask the questions. So he was very happy about this. He said, oh, so this is wonderful that nobody have actually uh, um, any doubt and any problems, any questions about this. But by the Buddha, the Buddha can read the mind of the people, of the monks. So he can see that all the monks, the lowest one that is in the front of them is actually Sotapan. Stream enter and Sotapan, he for sure don't have doubt. So it means that the Buddha say, out of reading the mind of the monks, that of course they will all the, don't have doubt because the most lowest from them is the Sotapan. And like I said, Sotapan is not possible to have a doubt. And then they just saw that nobody asking questions. So we say, ah, because of this, he, he assumed that oh, everybody is so uh, developed. But the Buddha, because they read the mind of them, then he knew about it. Please. And the blessed one addressed the bhikkhus, saying, Behold now, bhikkhus, I exhort you. All compounded things are subject to vanish. Strive with earnestness. Okay. Uh -huh. And this was? This was the last word of the Tathagata. You see, and then the Buddha is finishing with the monk and the, his life in the moment that he just encouraged the monk to continue to practice, don't forget you will die also. So don't waste your time. Start with the effort and energy. Give yourself to the practice to overcome suffering. So this is the way how the Buddha actually, the last speech of the Buddha. Now we continue. And the blessed one entered the first jhana. Rising from the first jhana, he entered the second jhana. Rising from the second jhana, he entered the third jhana. Rising from the third jhana, he entered the fourth jhana. And rising out of the fourth jhana, he entered the sphere of infinite space. Rising from the attainment of the sphere of infinite space, he entered the sphere of infinite consciousness. Rising from the attainment of the sphere of infinite consciousness, he entered the sphere of nothingness. Rising from the attainment of the sphere of nothingness, he entered the sphere of neither perception nor non-perception. And rising out of the attainment of the sphere of neither perception nor non-perception, he attained to the cessation of perception and feeling. One moment. So you see what the Buddha is doing. Now the Buddha is laying down. He's not dying yet, okay? He's not leaving his body yet. He starts to get to, because he is very well trained, by concentration, he starts to, uh, to raise up his jhana from 
the lowest jhana, the first jhana, into the first, the highest from the rupa jhana. This is the fourth jhana, and then to arupa jhana. And after this, he reached to the situation of neither perception, no, and uh, sorry, no feel, no feeling, cessation of perceptions and feeling. This is the concentrations that only enlightened person can do it. <clears throat> No, the normal people, they are not enlightened, even anagami cannot do it. This is something like shut down his mind. Nobody at home. I explain it that even if the atomic bomb will come, cannot destroy the body. There is no one inside. This only enlightened person can do it. This is called neither a cessation of perception and feeling. It means the mind is not exist in the body. Okay? So the Buddha he go up to do, 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 all the jhana till he come to this stage. And then, because he's very well trained, he's starting to uh, let's see what happened in this moment. And the Venerable Ananda spoke to the Venerable Anuruddha, saying, Venerable Anuruddha, the blessed one has passed away. Oh, okay. So now An Ananda he cannot read the mind of the of person. Anuruddha, actually, Venerable Anuruddha Jan, he's the brother, stepbrother of the Ananda. They are brother, both of them, I think same father, if I don't wrong. And Anuruddha is standing there and can read the mind of the Buddha. So Ananda, he cannot read the mind of the Buddha. He look at the dead body. You see the dead body is totally shut down. So you think, okay, moment of dying. But because An Anuruddha Jan can read the details inside the mind, you can see that actually Buddha didn't pass away yet. He's in the percept a cessation of perception and feeling. Okay, so uh, he answered this to to the. Let's continue. No, friend Ananda, the blessed one has not passed away. He has entered the state of the cessation of perception and feeling. Okay, so you see that Anuruddha Jan, because he can read the mind of the Buddha, he know the conditions in the mind. And then continue. Then the blessed one, rising from the cessation of perception and feeling, enter the sphere of neither perception nor non-perception. Sorry, he's starting to go down by jhana now. The Buddha is starting to go down in the jhana. Yeah. Rising from the attainment of the sphere of neither per perception nor non-perception, he entered the sphere of nothingness. Rising from the attainment of the sphere of nothingness, he entered the sphere of infinite consciousness. Rising from the attainment of the sphere of infinite consciousness, he entered the sphere of infinite space. Rising from the attainment of the sphere of infinite space, he entered the fourth jhana. Rising from the fourth jhana, he entered the third jhana. Rising from the third jhana, he entered the second jhana. Rising from the second jhana, he entered the first jhana. Rising from the okay. first... Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. You see what the Buddha is doing? He's on the top of the concentration. You see how much trained is the Buddha. Huh? It's amazing. <laughs> he can play with this, du -du 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 -du, control all this concentration. So he go up to the top of the top, it's possible. And now he go down again to the beginning of the concentration, which is the first jhana. But now he didn't finish it. He didn't, don't die yet. yet. What continue? Rising from the first jhana, he entered the second jhana. Rising from the second jhana, he entered the third jhana. Rising from the third jhana, he entered the fourth jhana. And rising from the fourth jhana, the blessed one immediately passed away. Yeah, you see what the Buddha he do? He, after he get again to the first jhana, he start to go up to the fourth jhana, uh, uh, but not a rupa jhana, rupa jhana, okay? And from the Upajana is dying, is passing away, is going into Parinirvana. Something like that. He never reborn again. Okay. And then And when the blessed one had passed away simultaneously with his Parinirvana, there came a tremendous earthquake, dreadful and astounding, and the thunders rolled across the heavens. You see, now I told you already when three months ago, I mean, not in our three months, in our story three months ago, the Buddha let go his life. And in the moment that the Buddha let go his, his life, became earthquake. The Buddha explained to Ananda that there is eight reasons for earthquake. 
for example, when the Buddha, he, um, after the Buddha, he, when the Buddha decided as a Bodhisattva, decided to come to his mother womb. When the Buddha, I think the birth, when I don't remember exactly the eight things that uh, the reason, one of them in the moment that the Buddha decided I'm going to die. So this was three months ago. And now in the moment that the Buddha passed away, it's also, so eight reason to the earthquake. And what happened in this earthquake is that all the universe shaking, it's not earthquake in our health only, even in the sky, in the heavenly sky, all the, everything shaking, okay? Yeah, please. And when the blessed one had passed away simultaneously with his Parinibbana, Brahma Sahampati spoke this stanza. One moment, who is Sampati? Sampati is the God which come and invite the Buddha to teach. After the Buddha gets enlightened, the Buddha says, I will not teach because the, nobody will be able to, to learn this teaching. So Sampati, he come and ask permission from the Buddha, please teach. He, because of him, we have the teaching of the Buddha. Otherwise, the Buddha will not teach. Someone has to ask the Buddha to teach. So Sampati, Brahma Sampati is the one that comes. This is why you know this maybe Brahma Jaloka Tipati Sampati Kathanjali. This is him talking about in the moment that Sampati comes and bow to the Buddha and ask, please teach. So now in the moment that the Buddha passed away, the Brahma Sampati, he speak this speaking. What do you say? All must depart, all beings that have life, must shed their compound forms, yet even one, a master such as he, a peerless being, powerful in wisdom, the enlightened one, has passed away. You say everything is a nature. Nothing can stay. Okay, even Buddha has to die to finish. Yeah, and then? And when the blessed one had passed away, simultaneously with his Parinibbana, Saka, King of God, King of the Gods spoke this stanza. Okay, this is Saka, it's the king of the 33 gods, okay? Uh, the god of the 33, he speaks these things which is very, very important. We are using this in our chanting. Yeah. Transient are all compounded things, subject to arise and vanish. Having come into existence, they pass away. Good is the peace when they forever cease. This when people dying, we are chanting these things. Anicha wata sankara upata wata mino pachita wadi chanti te samu pasa mosuko. This is a, the monk. They invite the monk, and then the monk is chanting this chanting. It doesn't anyone passing away. So this is one of the ceremony or some one of the sentence that we are doing in the moment of of uh, when we invited for a passing away ceremony. We are using this kind of thing, of sentence. What actually the Saka. Yeah. And when the blessed one had passed away, simultaneously with his Parinibbana, the Venerable Anuruddha spoke this stanza. Yeah. No, no movement of the breath, but with steadfast heart, free from desires and tranquil, so the sake comes to his end. By mortal pangs unshaken, his mind, like a flame extinguished, finds release. Uh, and Buddha, what he refer, he refer to the quality of the Buddha, to the mind quality of the Buddha in the moment of the uh, of the dying. Yeah. What's the condition of the mind, or is the uh, let's say mental qualities, and then Ananda. And when the blessed one had had passed away simultaneously with his Parinibbana, the venerable Ananda spoke this stanza. Then there was terror and the hair stood up when he, the all accomplished one, the Buddha, passed away. You see, Ananda was only sort of part. So they refer to the earthquake. So he said, oh, so uh, my hair stand up, okay? And this is talking about it. What you feel in the moment that uh, the Buddha passes. See, everyone talking on his perspective. Yeah. Then, when the blessed one had passed away, some bhikkhus, not yet freed from passion, lifted up their arms and wept, 
and some flinging themselves on the ground rolled, rolled from side to side and wept, lamenting, too soon has the blessed one come to his parinibana. Too soon has the happy one come to his parinibana. Too soon has the eye of the world vanished from sight. You see, and then people or monks that they are very, very not developed, just beginner, even not sort of and whatever, they start to cry, they start to shout, they start to hem, hem, okay? Please. But the bhikkhus were, who were freed from passion, mindful and clearly comprehending, reflected in this way, <clears throat> impermanent are all compounded things, how could this be otherwise? This is anagami and up. Okay, anagami and up, they are even not crying. Sotapan Sakatakami can cry. They, the tear can come, the sadness is there. So they were, they, this is a referred. You see, I told you, every person talking by, or perceiving or talking by his own uh, ways of knowledge. So they are, the normal people, Sotapan and Sakatakami, they are all crying. Blah, 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 blah. They, Anagami and Arahant, they say anything in Anicca anyway, okay? And actually, uh, Sakatakami also will not shout and all these things. Sotapan can cry, you know? tears come up, but the normal people, which even know this, they will shout and even throw themselves to the floor and they cry so much. Yeah. And the Venerable Anuruddha addressed the bhikkhu saying, <clears throat> enough. Friends, do not grieve, do not lament, for has not the blessed one declared that with all that is dear and beloved, there must be change, separation, and severance of that which is born, come into being, compounded and subject to decay? How can one say, may it not come to the solution? The deities, friends, are aggrieved. Okay. This is now teaching Dharma. So when Buddha, he explained the way of how the Buddha perceiving everything in each other. He tell the monk, don't cry. This is normal that everything you're teaching. Teach them Dhamma. It is duty, not elder. Yeah. But venerable sir, of what deities is the venerable Anuruddha aware? There are deities, friend Ananda, in space and on the earth who are earthly minded. With this heveled hair, they weep. With uplifted arms, they weep, flinging themselves on the ground. They roll from side to side, lamenting. Too soon has the blessed one come to his parinibana. Too soon has the happy one come to his parinibana. Too soon has the eye of the world vanished from sight. But those deities who are freed from passion, mindful and clearly comprehending, reflect in this way. Impermanent are all compounded things. How could this be otherwise? You see, the same behave like the people. Also, the angels, they are in the same way. Some angels, they are very close to the Buddha. They like the Buddha, but they are not developing the mind. Maybe some of them even not Sotapan. Some of them maybe Sotapan. But they, so they are also crying and shouting, same like the human being. But the people cannot see them. But Anuruddha, he can see them. So Anuruddha share with the people that there is also angels that behaving in this way, okay? But also there is angels which they are developing the mind and then they didn't cry. They stay mindful and something even anagami or sotapan and sakatakami, that they are angels. So they are uh, aware to the situations, but they are not uh, lamenting and crying and shouting, okay? Yeah. Now the Venerable Anuruddha and the Venerable Ananda spent the rest of the night in talking on the Dhamma. Then they the Venerable... Sorry, they continue Anuruddha, Jan, and Ananda, they are sitting, they are the elders, they are sitting and they are teaching Dhamma all the night, okay? Then yeah. the Venerable Anuruddha spoke to the Venerable Ananda, saying, go now, friend Ananda, to Kusinara and announce to the Malas, the blessed one, Vasetas, has passed away. Do now as seems fitting to you. And now, Anuruddha-chan say, we are a monk, we are near the Buddha, we witness that the Buddha pass away, but we have to inform the people that they have to take care for the body of the Buddha, because the monk should not take care for the body of the Buddha. Said to Ananda, leave it to the people. 
So now the monks have to inform that uh, to the people, which is busy in their own things, that the Buddha pass away, come and take care to his body or do whatever if you want to worship them or whatever. Huh? Please. So be it, venerable sir. And the venerable Ananda prepared himself in the forenoon and taking bowl and rope, went with a companion into Kusinara. At that time, the malas of Kusinara had gathered in the council to hall to consider that very matter. And the venerable Ananda approached them and announced, the blessed one, Vasetas, has passed away. Do now as seems fitting to you. You see, now Ananda go and informing the people about this, that the Buddha passed away. Yeah. And when they heard the venerable Ananda speak these words, the malas with her sons, their wives, and the wives of their sons were sorely grieved, grieved at heart and afflicted, and some with their hair all this heveled, with arms upraised in despair, wept. Flinging themselves on the ground, they rolled from side to side, lamenting, too soon has the blessed one come to his parinibbana, too soon has the happy one come to his parinibbana, too soon has the eye of the world vanished from sight. You see, same reactions, the people, because they are ordinary people, of course, they are not talking about monks, so there is no someone developed so high, and they are reacting the same thing, panic, okay? Yeah. Then the malas of Kusinara gave orders to their men, saying, gather now all the perfumes, flower garlands, and musicians, even all that are in Kusinara. And the malas with the perfumes, the flower garlands, and the musicians, and with 500 sets of clothing, went to the Sala Grove, the recreation park of the Malas, and approached the body of the Blessed One. And having approached, they paid homage to the body of the Blessed One with dance, song, music, flower garlands, and perfume, and erecting canopies and pavilions. They spent the day showing respect, honor, and veneration to the body of the Blessed One. And then the thought came to them, now the day is too far spent for us to cremate the body of the Blessed One. Tomorrow we'll do it. We you see that they are coming to worship the body of the Buddha. the Buddha. Buddha is laying down on the right side. The head is to the north. And then the people come. And then they bring things. And then they worship the body of the Buddha. So after he come already to be late. Say, oh, okay, okay. We wait for tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow we will cremate. Tomorrow we will do what is necessary to do. Okay, so then? And for the second day, in a third, fourth, fifth, and sixth day, they paid homage to the body of the Blessed One with dance, song, music, flower garlands, and perfume, and erecting canopies and pavilions. They spent the day showing respect, honor, and veneration to the body of the Blessed One. But on the seventh day, the thought came to them, we have paid homage to the body of the Blessed One with dance, song, music, flower garlands, and perfume, and have shown respect, honor, and veneration. Let us now carry the body of the Blessed One southward to the southern part of the town and beyond, and let us there cremate the body of the Blessed okay. One south of the town. Wonderful. So you see what happened. They are oh, they excited. They worship the Buddha one day, and then second day, and then third day. More, 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 more. After one week, they decided, okay, now I finish seven days. Now it's the time for us to take the Buddha and to cremate the body. But they have idea how to do it. We should do it in special place on the south of Kusinaga. Okay, that's what they want to do. They want to take the body to, of the Buddha to the south and there to cremate the body. But what happened? See. And eight malas of the foremost families bathed from the crown of their heads and wearing new clothes with the thought we will lift up the body of the blessed one, try to do so, but they could not. Okay, they are trying to raise up the body, but stacking the, the body is not moving. They cannot, it's too heavy for them. Eight people trying to raise up. They are very strong people, but somehow happened. They're stacking, they cannot move. What happened? Yeah. Then the Mala spoke to the Venerable Anuruddha, saying, What is the cause, Venerable Anuruddha? What is the reason that these eight Malas of the foremost families bathed from the crown of their heads and wear, wear, wearing clothes with the thought, We will lift up the body of the Blessed One, try to do so, but cannot? 
So they are asking uh, uh, you have special power, you can answer things what people cannot know. And then what you say to them? You, Basetas, have one purpose. The deities have another. Okay, you see what he say? You want to take him to the south. But the angels, they have different idea. So they block you. Yeah. Then what, Venerable Sir, is the purpose of the, of the deities? Your purpose, Vasetas, is this. We have paid homage to the body of the Blessed One with dance, song, music, flower garlands, and perfume, and have shown respect, honor, and veneration. Let us now carry the body of the Blessed One southward to the southern part of the town and beyond, and let us there cremate the body of the Blessed One south of the town. But the purpose of the deities, Vasetas, is this. We have paid homage to the body of the Blessed One with heavenly dance, song, music, flower garlands and perfume and have shown respect, honor and veneration. Let us now carry the body of the blessed one northward to the northern part of the town and having carried it through the northern gate, let us go through the center of the town and then eastward to the east of the town and having passed through the east gate, let us carry it to the Chetia of the Malas, Makuta Bandana and there let us cremate the body of the blessed one. You see, actually, the angels, they say, you want to go to the south. The angels want to take it to the north and then to the east, through the city. When we go to, the, to see the places of the Buddha, we will visit, visit uh, uh, Kusinara. We will visit the place, the temple, where the Buddha actually last time lay down. And also, we will go to the place of the cremation, this place where I'm talking about. Uh, the temple, this temple that the cremation. So we will visit these two places. Yeah. And then, uh, okay, so what the people say, the people, and, and would have and say, you want to take him to the south, the deity, deity want to do different directions of walking and also to put him in different place to cremate him in another place. So what the people say? As the deities wish, venerable sir, so let it be. Thereupon the whole, whole of Kusinara, even to the dust heaps and rubbish heaps, became covered knee-deep in Mandaraba flowers. And homage was paid to the body of the Blessed One by the deities as well as the malas of Kusinara. With dance, song, music, flower garlands, and perfume, both divine and human, respect, honor, and veneration were shown. And they carried the body of the Blessed One northward to the northern part of the town. And having carried it through the northern gate, they went through the center of the town and then eastward to the east of the town. And having passed through the east gate, they carried the body of the Blessed One to the Chetia of the Malas, Makuta Bandana, and there laid it down. You see what happened? In the moment that the people agree, and then the people can raise up the body, okay? And then they start to walk. In the moment that they start to walk, different flowers start to get down to the floor. So all Kusina became very beautiful flowers, even the dirty places covered, everything covered and became beautiful. And then uh, the heavenly dancing, every, every song start to be there. Okay? Something like also the angels, also human beings, they all pay respect to the Buddha in this moment. Okay, so you remember these flowers fail and cover the village, yeah, the city, yeah. And then, then, the, then the malas of Kusinara spoke to the Venerable Ananda, saying, how should we act, Venerable Ananda, respecting the body of the Tathagata? After the same manner, Vasetas, as towards the body of a universal monarch. This is last time the Buddha, Ananda asked the Buddha what we should do with your body. So the Buddha explained to Ananda, how to, uh, before cremation, how to prepare the cremation, and what to do with the body. And this is the same like king turning the wheels. And then Ananda give them the same instructions to the people, because the Buddha say again, so the monk, you should not deal with it. Let the people doing it. You will practice. You don't trouble yourself with cremations. And then there, uh, Ananda now started to explain what the Buddha explained. But how, Venerable Ananda, do they act respecting the body of a universal monarch? The body of a universal monarch, Vasetas, is first wrapped around with new linen and then with teased cotton wool. 
And again, it is wrapped around with new linen and again with teased cotton wool. And so it is done up to 500 layers of linen and 500 of cotton wool. When that is done, the body of the universal monarch is placed in an iron oil vessel, which is enclosed in another iron vessel, and a funeral pyre is built of all kinds of perfumed woods, and so the body of the universal monarch is burned. And at the crossroads, a stupa is raised from the universal monarch, so it is done vasitas with the body of an universal monarch. Yeah. So you see, he explained them exactly how to cover under the wall and what to do. And then after this, when they finish the cremation, what still to do? Yeah, you have to, they have to uh, put, uh, uh, like to make jedi, okay, stupa with this. Yeah. And even Vasitas, as with the body of a universal monarch, so should it be done with the body of the Tathagata. And at a crossroads, also a stupa should be raised for the Tathagata. And whoever shall bring to that place garlands or incense or sandalwood paste or pay reverence and whose mind becomes calm there, it will be to his well-being and happiness for a long time. You understand why we have jedi, why we have stupa, why we are going and worshiping the stupa? Because our mind is very sensitive. When we thinking this is a body of an enlightened person, so in us coming some happiness, which encourages us to the happy side, a good, good side. So that's why the Buddha encourages us to make something like worship these st uh, supas, okay, jedis. Yeah. Then the malas gave orders to their men saying, gather now all the teased cotton wool of the malas. And the malas of Kusinara wrapped the body of the blessed one round with new linen and then with teased cotton wool. And again, they wrapped it around with new linen and again with teased cotton wool. And so it was done up to 500 layers of linen and 500 of cotton wool. When that was done, they placed the body of the blessed one in an iron oil vessel, which was enclosed in another iron vessel. And they built a funeral pyre for, of all kinds of perfumed woods and upon it, they lay the body of the blessed one. So they make exactly what uh, Ananda give them uh, instructions. They build exactly these things. Now we continue. Now at that time, the Venerable Mahakasapa was journeying from Bhava to Kusinara together with a large company of 500 bhikkhus. And on the way, the Venerable Mahakasapa went aside from the highway and sat down at the foot of a tree. Now, if you remember, the Buddha came from, from Pava to Kusinara. Okay, he stopped many times on the way, but actually it's a journey of one day only. And then Mahakasapa was the highest from all the monks that time. He was something like the most uh, elder for all of them. He had a group of monks going with them, and he was just not far from Kusinara, about less than one day walking. So now remember that passed already one week since the Buddha passed away, okay? So when Mahakasapa, he don't know yet. He don't have power, uh, psychic power to know that the Buddha passed away. So he don't have any knowledge the Buddha passed away. And he stay only a few hours walking to the place where Buddha stayed in Kusinara. Yeah. And a certain Ajivaka came by on his way to Bhava and he had taken a Mandarava flower from Kusinara. And the Venerable Mahakasapa saw the Achivaka coming from a distance, and as he drew close, he spoke to him, saying, Do you know, friend, anything of our master? You see what happened? I told you that Kusinara was full of heavenly and different kind of flowers, which was very special. This one, Mahakasapa probably knew how to recognize. It. And he don't know Buddha passed away. But in the same day, that the, 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 the uh, Mahakasapa is just a few hours to Kusinara. There is another ascetic, another yogi, that he go and he see the, this event, Buddha pass away. He, he saw the flowers, beautiful flowers. He took one flowers, put in his ear, ear like this. Oh, so nicely. So he's walking. So he come on the way, cross the road where Mahakasapa is sitting. So Mahakasapa see the flowers here. He said, what is it? How come? So this is this flower, something should be something special. It, it show me something about the Buddha. 
I have suspect about it. So he asked him, do you know anything about our master? Because this flower should be something like symbol of something happened. Yeah. Yes, friend, I know. It is now seven days since the ascetic Gotama passed away. From there, I have brought this Mandarava flower. You see, he told him, yeah, I bring it. You mean Mahakasapa have a good guess. He could guess it very clear that something is going there. So then this uh, yogi, he, he proved it, that I come there and your, your master pass away, actually. Okay? Yeah. Thereupon, some bhikkhus, not yet freed from passion, lifted up their arms and wept, and some, flinging themselves on the ground, rolled from side to side and wept, Lamenting, too soon has the blessed one come to his parinibana, too soon has the happy one come to his parinibana, too soon has the eye of the world vanished from sight. You see, again, some of the monks there, they are very beginners, they are not so much developed, and then they are crying, they are not happy, oh, we lost our master. Yeah. Now, now at that time, one Subada who had renounced only his old age, was seated in the assembly, and he addressed the bhikkhus, saying, Enough, friends, do not grieve, do not lament. We are all well rid of that great ascetic. Too long, friends, have we been oppressed by his saying, This is fitting for you, that is not fitting for you. Now we shall be able to do as we wish, and what we do not wish, that we shall not do. You see what, the group of Mahakasapa, another monk, he is very, very old, just very beginner, and he don't like the precept. Why Buddha he all the time give us precepts? He say, don't do this, don't do that. And then he come to the monk, he say, why do you have to cry? Why are you are worried about? Now we are free. We can do whatever we want. You don't need to cry. You need to be happy. He all the time block us. Now we can be, do whatever we want. This is one of the reasons Maakasapa decided to make the meeting of 500 enlightened monks, and then they put the precept Vinaya. Okay? Mahakasapa recognized that just the Buddha passed away. Immediately the monks asked him to make foolish things. So he said, we must put all the precepts together. You see what happened? The Buddha just passed away. The monks say, ah, we're happy. Well, now we can do whatever we want. So Mahakasapa decided, we must write all to co let it collect all the precepts together. And after the Buddha pass away, he collects 500 enlightened monks, and then they put the precept for us. This is the Vinaya, the Patimoka. Yeah, please. But the Venerable Mahakasapa addressed the bhikkhu saying, Enough, friends, do not grieve, do not lament, for has not the Blessed One declared that with all that is dear and beloved, there must be change, separation, and severance, of that which is born, come into being, compounded, and subject to decay, how can one say, may it not come to dissolution? Yeah. See, actually, what happened? This monk, he tell the people, to the monk, don't cry, because now we are free. But Mahakasapa, he, uh, Maha he said to the monk, don't cry, okay? But not because we are, we are free, because everything is an itcha. Okay, something like he also tell them, don't cry the same way. He don't start to tell them why you speak like this. Da, 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 da. He keep quiet, but he said them, you don't need to cry because everything is in each other. Teach them Dharma. Yeah. Now at that time, four malas of the foremost families bathed from the crown of their heads and wearing new clothes with the thought, we will set alight the blessed one's pyre. Try to do so, but they could not. You see what no. happened? Now they, they want to start to cremate the body. So they take, they're starting to make the light. They take the matches, they try to make the light. But something happened that the, the dead body and all the, the cremation area is not coming any fire. They cannot make a fire. Something blocked them to make the fire. Yeah. And the Mala spoke to the Venerable Nuruda saying, what is the cause, Venerable Aniruddha? What is the reason that these four malas of the foremost families bath from the crown of their heads and wearing new clothes with the thought, we will set alight the blessed one's pyre, try to do so, but cannot? 
You see, so they're asking Anuta Jana, what, what problem? Why we cannot make fire? If you want to burn the body, but something blocks us. So what does Anuta Jana say? You, Basetas, have one purpose, the deities have another. Yeah. You mm. say you want something, but the deity, the angels, have another idea about burning the dead of the body. The, the, okay, please. Then what, Venerable Sir, is the purpose of, their, of the deities? The purpose of the deities, Vasetas, is this. The Venerable Mahakasapa is on his way from Pava to Kusinara, together with a large company of 500 bhikkhus. Let not the blessed one's pyre be set alight until the Venerable Mahakasapa has paid homage at the feet of the blessed one. You see, the angels, they are waiting for Mahakasapa. They wish that Mahakasapa is not far from here. Let them come first. Pay respect to the Buddha, and then we can cremate the body. Okay, they say, no, don't, don't, don't do it earlier. Let them come first. Okay, actually, not a few hours, you have to come. Yeah. As the deities wish, Venerable Sir, so let it be. And the Venerable Mahakasapa approached the pyre of the Blessed One at the Chetiya of the Malas, Makutabandana in Kusinara, and he arranged his upper robe on one shoulder, and with his clasped hands raised in salutation, he walked three times round the pyre, keeping his right side towards the Blessed One's body, and he paid homage at the feet of the Blessed One. And even so did the 500 bhikkhus. Okay, you see what? Mahakasapa is coming, making around three times, and coming and prostrating to the legs of the Buddha. And then what happened? And when homage had been paid by the Venerable Mahakasapa and the 500 bhikkhus, the pyre of the Blessed One burst into flame by itself. You see, even though nobody needs to, to, like a magic, bloop, fire coming up. Yeah. And it came about that when the body of the, of the Blessed One had been burned, no ashes or particles were to be seen of what had been skin, tissue, flesh, sinews, and fluid. Only bones remained. Just as when ghee, ghee or oil is burned, it leaves no particles or ashes behind. Even so, when the body of the Blessed One had been burned, no ashes or particles were to be seen of what had been skin, tissue, flesh, sinews, and fluid. Only bones remained. And of the 500 linen wrapping, wrappings, only two were not consumed, the innermost and the outermost. You see what happened? The body of the Buddha is so pure. That normally, if you burn the body of uh, chicken, of human being, normally you can see ashes, you see the, it became dirty and smelly. But here, it became relic. We have it. So you have many, many places. You can see in the Machari also. Okay, I can show you. I can show you. This is still exist because later on, you know how we have, have them. Okay? So uh, they are very, very beautiful. Like a, I don't cannot say diamond, okay? It's special, special. We call it our hand tattoo. This is an element of enlightened person, okay? So only these bones can stay. Yeah? So this is what we say. And yeah. when the body of the blessed one had been burned, water rained down from heaven and extinguished the pyre of the blessed one. And from the silent trees, water came forth. And the malas of Kusinara brought water scented with many kinds of perfumes, and they too extinguished the pyre of the blessed one. See what happened after the, the burning finish, and then there uh, water coming from the sky. This is the angels. They are uh, shared. They're turning off the, also from the tree, also from the people. Everybody share. They're turning, uh, turning off the fire. And the malas of Kusinara laid the re relics of the Blessed One in their council hall and surrounded them with a lattice work of spears and encircled them with a fence of bows. And there for seven days they paid homage to the relics of the Blessed One with dance, song, music, flower garlands and perfume and showed respect, honor and veneration to the relics of the Blessed One. Now they are paying respect to the relic itself. Okay, now coming to be what they are going to do with this relic. But what time now? Now it's already nine o uh, eight o'clock and six and something like quarter after nine uh, after eight o'clock. 
So I don't know, maybe it will be too long already. We can make a break and we can finally finish in the last next week. So what do you think about this? Anyone can write on it or you just want to finish it? It's a nice idea. It's a good a idea. Nice idea to continue next week. Yes, yeah, so we have such yeah, otherwise yeah, we can digest more. It's a lot of information. This is very good sutta, and it's good that we break it into the pieces. Ah, so feed everything together. So now we're coming to the situations when the people is going to uh, divide the relic and to what they are going to do with the relic. How is the procedure? What they are doing actually there? It's already some information by itself. So we make break now. And if anyone has questions about what we talk today or anything, you're most welcome. And the rest we will continue. I think it will be the final uh, talk about Mahaparinavana Sutta, but it will be next week or whenever the next time will come. Uh, any questions or something about this, about any other thing? I should keep it or make a stop sharing. Okay, I make stop sharing. Yes, please. Anyone have questions or want to ask something about this subject, about other things? Don't be shy. Good. So if no question, I will say thank you very much also for today. Congratulations for yeah. Congratulations for your retreat. Thank you very much. I want to share with all of you the retreat uh, merits that I gained from these two retreats to, from all of you and your families. And uh, thank you for uh, understanding and giving me the opportunity and uh, be patient. And also for the Dhammachari, the group of Dhammachari, I know that they also did the retreat. So I also say congratulations for this. And thank you very much for uh, all of you, Kalyana Mita, for walking the way of the Dharma. It's nowadays for sure, it's not normal to see people like this. So I really appreciate it. I know how lucky I am that I have friends and family like this. Thank you very much for all of you. And uh, wow, good sad. night. And bis zum nächsten Mal. Yeah. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Sadu. Thank you to Prabhupada for everything. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. And all the best. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Gute Nacht. Bye-bye. Gute Nacht.